Welcome to the Bible Truth of Our Hymns. We're going to look at a hymn from a hymnal and check it to see if that hymn is biblically sound or not. There are stanzas in the hymns or words that are not correct from the Bible. We need to see that in a church where there are three types of people. Number one, they're saved and serving and loving the Lord. Number two, they're saved and they're worldly. And number three, lastly, they're lost men. Jesus said, every idle word shall man give an account. Are we proposing men and women in the church to sin by the hymns that are chosen? We will examine some, but not all, in this study. We will set a groundwork that the sin, that the sin, the hymn that we missed, you can be able to check for yourself and study yourself to see is this hymn that I like correct now not all the hymns that we're going to look at will be wrong many will be great and wonderful hymns and a few will have to be is it really proper will it glorify God or will it cause a man to sin The biblical truth of our hymns today great is thy faithfulness and I see here we have a copyright uh, hope publishing company Carol stream the second and what we're going to do is we're going to use this for learning and educating ourselves on hymns are they proper or are they not proper because it's more important today let's not look at this hymn right now not talk about this. Here. I'm talking about some of this recently. We go about all oh, the King James Bible has been corrected. Will be to the King James Bible. They have changed the Bible, the modern Bible. And then when we pick up a hymn book and we see that the hymn book has been changed itself, that goes against the Bible, we just keep on singing like a bunch of uh, pigs running off to be slaughtered. We don't rise up and say, hey, there's something wrong here. And it's disturbing that a church will sing a hymn. I'm not talking about this one. And the hymn be biblically wrong. That's, that's the preface to today. Great is thy faithfulness. And Chris Holm, I'm saying his name wrong, forgive me. Had a Christian conversion experience at the age of 27 during a revival in Franklin led by Dr. Henry Clay Morrison. He served as a Methodist minister for one year before resigning due to poor health. Lamentations 2 3. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. From Lamentations, a book of the words of woes of Judah. Jeremiah praises the Lord, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 18. Rejoice evermore. Pray without season. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of Christ. This is the will of God in Christ concerning you. Now, we're looking at the hymn here. And in the midst of Lamentations, Judah has been destroyed. And we see grace thy faithfulness every morning, every new morning. God does something. Great is thy faithfulness. How else can you describe God? God is never useless. God is never prone to not be faithful. Though sometimes we wish the faithfulness be a little quicker. Oh God, my Father. And as he is, he's our father. We are his children. And by faith in Jesus Christ, I am his child. Anyone who is saved, born again, 
are the children of God by Jesus Christ. And that Father, that God that we see here, is always reliable, unlike men. I could say it with the most innocency of words. I will meet you tomorrow at 2 o'clock at such and such place. And with no maliciousness, with no sin, with no evil intent, I may not be able to be there. Accident, traffic, death, whatever. And yet we have a God that is always reliable, always without sin, always faithful, unlike men. We see here that he changes not. God is and always will be holy. He'll never sin. He'll never do wrong. And compassions that he has for us. Job says, has you have eyes like I have? And the answer is many, 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 many years later. Yes, through the eyes of Jesus. Through the pain and sorrow and hunger and thirst and sleepiness and weariness and groaning in the spirit. God has taken on flesh. God has taken on what it is to be human. God has taken on to see a funeral and tear. To see people reject him. To see and suffer pain on his last 24 hours. And his children to suffer. And we see that the, the, the seasons that we have are given by God. And I don't know because of carpet, I don't know how much I can say. But when we see the Bible and God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day. From the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years this hymn is scriptural this matches what the bible has to say unlike you know read three kings and you take it all out of context there no they weren't kings we don't know if there were three of them we don't know if it was a starry sky that day But when we take a hymn like this, we see God and not nonsense. Psalms 150 verse 6, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Psalms 148, 1 through 14, praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all the hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him all the stars of light. On and on and on. It's all about praising God. And the day that we get to heaven, whether we die, be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or the day, the rapture. And speaking about him, when we talk about the rapture, God, Jesus Christ, is not coming to the earth to get us. We'll get to that in later, maybe. And do you realize when we get to heaven, glory one day, as we are in the streets of New Jerusalem, and we are in before God on His throne in Jesus Christ, we're not going to pat each other on our backs, or our preacher, or our evangelist. We're going to say, Great is thy faithfulness that God has brought us here. God has taken away our tears. God has given us a new body. God has given us redemption. God has given us eternal hope. It's miserable that today and this earth, we see these ministries and that man's name is plastered, that woman's name is plastered all over the place. Why not God? Pardon. Now this is a remarkable word in this hymn because we must know what pardon means. Because even as Americans, we have taken this word and it doesn't mean nothing anymore. As I've said before in other lessons, at the end of a term of president, United States president, he will pardon individuals out of jail. And he has that option. He may do it or he may not do it. 
But what we do is we forget what the word pardon means. And by the definition of the law court, pardon is someone who has acknowledged they have committed a crime. Fully admitted to the crime that they've been charged with. And maybe others. And to receive that pardon from the head of the state, the king, or whoever. The warden. Pardon, when we mention about great is thy faithfulness. The day that I knelt down in my grandma's living room and said, God, I am a sinner and I need Jesus Christ. I am guilty. And great is God's faithfulness that he came down and saved my soul. And washed me of all my sins. I have a pardon because I'm guilty. Even still today, saved. I'm still a sinner. I'm still guilty. And he gives us strength. He gives us hope. Blessings. 10,000 besides, we can't number them. I was laying in bed last night, and you know, I, I, there were some sins in my life. And I realized those sins, those terrible sins I had done were after I was saved. It wasn't before. And I got down that moment, and I said, God, I am sorry, those are not under the blood. I finally realized that those sins were after I was saved. They were terrible. Lord, put them under the blood. I'm guilty. I don't know how many sins God has washed. And God, 1 John 1, 9, tells us he is able to forgive and forget. He doesn't even know how many sins he washed from my life. Every morning. Every morning. And we take that back from Lamentations 3.23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We ought not to wake up and say, oh, it's Monday or TGIF. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad in it. To mourn a Monday is not Christian. And to be pleased that it's a Friday is not Christian. It's ridiculous. And we must take time, and even I must take time to look at God and say, God, you are faithful. And we don't even know, have any idea, what true faithfulness is. At all. As I said, I could tell you, I'm going to be there, and I may not be able to be there. Physical impurities of a, of a, of a person's body may limit a love that he has for the spouse. Circumstances beyond our control limit our faithfulness. I cannot say, oh, I will suffer for Jesus Christ for the word of God, and I can't even sit in a dentist chair and take the pain pulling the tooth. Circumstances. And yet no circumstances changes our God that is forever the same. You better believe if every single prophecy of the first advent of Jesus Christ has happened and come to pass, from the conceivement of a virgin to seated at the right hand of the Father, that first advent, you better believe that the prophecies in there are of the second advent are yet to come. And will come. You better believe as a Jew that Jacob's trouble is coming. Not only a tribulation period, but the great tribulation period. They're coming. That is God's great faithfulness. I am going to beat them Jews for their mistreating me. They're mine. I got to whip them. And as great as the faithfulness that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, that he went all the way six miles to Calvary, 33 and a half years, 
and suffered and died upon that cross and went in that tomb and came out of that tomb three days and three nights according to the scriptures. Great is the faithfulness of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that drew us to Jesus. The Holy Spirit that convicted me of my sin. The Holy Spirit that is showing the, the, the Trinity, the greatest of faithfulness of the Trinity, that they are still working. The day that God saved my soul, he took a lump of clay, he threw it on the spindle, and he's still working it. And there's many times he had to take that clay and smush it back in again. He had to do it again. I don't know how many times he's done that. But great is thy faithfulness. He has to take that clay and throw it in the garbage. Great is his faithfulness that every day that I have living and breathing is for his honor and glory. And people who are unsaved don't realize great is the faithfulness that... As long as God gives me Saturday mornings and the time right now present that go out and preach the gospel to the lost world. Great is God's faithfulness. That they are still able to hear the gospel for four years of the ministry of the street that we have. There are people who have died. There are people who have left. But great is God's faithfulness. I wish I could do this whole song. And I don't see anything wrong with this song. Him. At all. I would include this hymn in the worship service. Everything I needed. Now, it's, now, the hymn writer wrote needed. It doesn't say wanted. Because there are things for Stiley Hayward that he wants that God says, you don't need that. If I were to give it to you, it ain't going to do you no good. It may do you more harm. What are the basic needs that Jesus said? Air. I got air to breathe. Water. Right here. I got Water right here. Food. I'm over blessed on that. I got a home. Four walls and a ceiling. Kitchen is packed. Computer. Ministry that goes all out. A wife and daughter that serve the Lord with me on the street. I've got a son that's in prison, and he's got right with God, and he's doing right with God. My mother's saved. I've got people right now that I know that are in heaven. I will see them again. I know people today that they will go to heaven when they die or rapture. I've got a hope to say one day I may not die. Great is God's faithfulness. He's going to call us home. And if I do die, I am not going to stay in that coffin. I am not going to stay in that dirt. God's going to call. That is God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. He's building me a mansion. There is a new Jerusalem. There is a new body. There is no pain of suffering. And yet today, great is God's faithfulness. Today, this morning, to God's faithfulness is He's taking care of us. Unto me. Great is God's faithfulness. I include this. When was the last time your church sang, Great is thy faithfulness? What other hymns are you doing?